This is the histological appearance of an angiomyolipoma. Angiomyolipomas are benign neoplasms. They, as the name implies, are composed of fat, smooth muscle cells and thick walled blood vessels. And approximately 1% of nephrectomies for tumour are angiomyolipomas and the instance is similar to that of renal cell carcinoma. Angiomyolipomas can occur at all ages. They may be asymptomatic if they are less than 4 cm in diameter. And they may present either as an incidental finding or on screening radiologically. Around 80% of tumours are greater than 4 cm across and if they are 9 cm or more they may be symptomatic. Symptoms include abdominal or flank pain that may be chronic or acute. The most serious problem is bleeding that may cause hypovolemic shock if severe. Another very serious complication is their potential to rupture during pregnancy. Angiomyolipomas are associated with mutations of TSC1 and TSC2 genes. They are part of the Pecoma family of tumours, and these are tumours derived from perivascular epithelioid cells. 50% of angiomyolipomas are associated with tuberous sclerosis, and over 50% of patients with tuberous sclerosis develop AMLs. And when they occur in patients with tuberous sclerosis, the AMLs tend to be small, multiple, and bilateral. So patients known to have tuberous sclerosis will be screened radiologically for AMLs. Grossly, AMLs may vary in size from less than 1 cm to around 30 cm. They arise from either the renal cortex, medulla or capsule. On cut surface they tend to be yellow due to the fatty component the tumours are non-encapsulated but well demarcated but may also be focally infiltrative and may extend into the renal vein and even the vena cava. And here is an angiomyolipoma that has been bisected. You can see it has a yellowish cut surface and also it is quite well demarcated. Histologically, angiomyolipomas have a varied appearance depending on the proportions of fat, vessels and smooth muscle. The smooth muscle cells may be spindle shaped, polygonal or epithelioid and if they are epithelioid they may be mistaken for carcinoma cells. The smooth muscle cells characteristically tend to radiate from the blood vessels producing a hair on end appearance and there may be atypia with mitoses but this does not imply malignancy. The blood vessels are thick walled and resemble arteries. This is a low power view of a typical angiomyolipoma. Here is an angio component of the angiomyolipoma. The vessel is thick walled resembling an artery but it lacks an elastic layer. Here is the myo component of the angiomyolipoma composed of mature smooth muscle cells. And here is the lipoma component composed of mature fat cells. This area shows one of the characteristic features of angiomyolipomas that you sometimes see. And that is a rim or cuff of smooth muscle cells around the outside of the blood vessels producing an appearance sometimes described as the hair on end appearance. And in this field is an example of pleomorphism 
in angiomyelipoma, but this does not imply malignant behaviour. So classic angiomyelipomas like this one are benign tumours. It is worth, however, mentioning epithelioid angiomyelipomas. To qualify as one of these, the tumour must be composed of more than 80% of epithelioid cells, and because of this there is a very small fat component. Consequently, radiologically and histologically, these tumours may mimic carcinoma. In addition, they may exhibit malignant behaviour, and if that is the case, a better term than malignant epithelioid angiomyolipoma is malignant pecoma. Angiomyolipomas show positive staining for HMB45 and actin, but negative staining with epithelial markers. So to finish off, here is an angiomyolipoma showing focal positive staining for smooth muscle actin or SMA.